it's hard for people to understand how there can be one God, yet that one God consists of three persons, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Bible calls it the Godhead, Acts 17, verse 29, Romans 1, verse number 20, Colossians 2, verse number 9. The word God or Godhead simply means deity. So when we see a passage that says one God, it's not saying that there's just one person or one being. It is saying that there is only one deity. Many refer to this as the Trinity, which is a man-made word. However, it does represent the Godhead well, since there are three distinct persons who make up the Godhead. Please note that all three are called God in Scripture. First, we have the Father. In John 6, verse 27, Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. See also John 3 and verse number 16, and 2 Peter 1 and verse 17. Next, we have Jesus being called God by the Father. In Hebrews 1 and verse 8, but to the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. See also Titus 2, verse 13, 2 Peter 1, verse number 1. Finally, we have Peter calling the Holy Spirit God. Acts 5, verse number 3. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. These three are not one person. They are three distinct beings who have the same nature and essence of deity, and they have the same goal. Some try to put their relationship in human terms by comparing them to an egg because it has an outer shell, an egg white, and a yolk which are three distinct parts that make up the one egg. Others have used a three-leaf clover to get the same idea across. We can also see how the Bible uses the word one to refer to the body of Christ. For example, Ephesians 4 and verse number 4 says there is one body. But 1 Corinthians 12 verses 12 through 20 and Romans 12 verses 4 through 5 teach us that we have many members that make up that one body and that we all have different roles within this one body. Even though we are many members, we are all to be of one mind. 1 Peter 3 verse 8, Philippians 1 verse 27, chapters 2 and verse number 2, 2 Corinthians 13 verse 11. In a similar way, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are of one mind and one purpose, and they are in perfect unity. To further show a plurality of persons that make up the one deity, all we have to do is examine the first verse of the Bible, Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. All three members of the Godhead can be seen in these verses because God the Father is the planner, and God the Son is the Creator as He carries out the Father's plans. As Paul wrote in Colossians 1, starting in verse 15, He, that is Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through Him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. The Holy Spirit is the organizer of those plans, as he is described as hovering over the water in verse 2 of Genesis chapter 1. The word God in verse 1 comes from the Hebrew word Elohim, and it is in the plural form, which means that there is more than one person that makes up God. The word Elohim is used more than 2,000 times in the Old Testament, and other Old Testament passages make this plurality clear as well, such as Genesis 1, verse 26, chapters 3, verse 22, chapters 11, verse number 7, 
in Isaiah 6 and verse number 8, which proves that more than one person makes up deity. There are many New Testament passages that show all three members of the Godhead as well, such as Matthew 28, 19, Ephesians 4, verses 4 through 6, Matthew 3, verses 16 through 17, Luke 3, verses 21 through 22, John 1, verse 32, Acts 10, verse 38, 2 Corinthians 13, verse 14, 1 John 5, verse 7, 1 Peter 1, verse 2, Jude, verses 20, 21, 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 through 6. Let's just look at the first one, Matthew 28, 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The definite article the before each member of the Godhead shows that they are not the same person. Also consider Jesus' baptism, as recorded in Matthew 3, verse 16. When he had been baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Notice all three members of the Godhead are there, because Jesus was baptized, and the Holy Spirit was descending on him like a dove, and the Father spoke from heaven. We can see some differences in the members of the Godhead in the following passages. Jesus is a mediator between man and the Father, 1 Timothy 2, verse number 5. Since a mediator is one who mediates between two people, we can know that Jesus cannot be the Father, as some like to claim. The Father knows when Jesus will return, but Jesus does not, according to Mark 13, verse 32. The Father would send the Holy Spirit to replace Jesus as the Comforter, John 14, verse 26. Since he would send the Holy Spirit, again, this shows that he is also a distinct person who is not the Father or the Son. Many more verses could be used, but these are enough to show that there is a clear distinction between these three persons. Now, we don't know everything we would like to know about the triune nature of God, but as I have shown in this short lesson, there is indeed three distinct persons that make up the Godhead.